This second module of the No Sweat Statistics training program will apply what you learned in module one. You'll see how the principles of variability, probability, and distribution, and the normal curve, can be used to control processes and the products and services you provide. This module is divided into four lessons. Lesson one introduces the concept of statistical process control. Lesson two introduces the characteristics of control charts. Lesson three introduces several types of control charts. And lesson four gives you guidelines for interpreting those control charts. This is lesson one, statistical process control. When you complete this lesson, you'll be able to define quality, explain the importance of the customer in defining quality, define statistical process control, explain how SPC can improve quality, and describe the relationship between the distributions of individuals and sample averages. Your ultimate goal, and everyone's goal, is to provide the highest quality products and services. But what does that mean? We certainly hear and use the word quality enough. As producers and consumers, we all demand high quality products and high quality services. However, everyone has his or her own definition of quality. Quality means whether a product is good or bad. But it's more than that. A quality service or product is one that meets the needs and expectations of the customer. Everyone who uses the products you produce is your customer. To the customer, certain characteristics of the product or service are more important than others. These are called key quality characteristics. For example, on this component from a photocopier, these holes must be just the right size and positioned precisely so that a set of lights will shine through them to activate electronic sensors. So the size of the holes and the location of the holes are key quality characteristics. We must talk to our customers to determine their needs and expectations and translate them into the key quality characteristics of our product. Then we can engineer and control our processes to produce products that stay within the customer's definition of quality. Statistics and statistical process control will help us meet the customer's needs and expectations and achieve those key quality characteristics. The term statistical process control, or SPC, sounds a bit frightening, but it's really not. Let's break it down into its three words. Statistical means using numbers to draw conclusions to make predictions. Statistics are certainly no strangers to any of us. Numbers can be used to make predictions and decisions. In your work, you also collect numbers and use them to make predictions and decisions. Process covers the steps that are performed in providing a service or manufacturing or assembling a product. In the broadest sense, the process includes the raw materials, the equipment, the methods, the operator's input, even the environment. Control means to make something behave within the boundaries we have determined for it. The boundaries typically are established from past history about the process. Sometimes they change as the process is better able to satisfy the customer's key quality requirements. Taken together, the words statistical process control mean with the help of numbers, we can measure and control the characteristics of a process to make it produce services or products that meet the customer's key quality requirements. This is a good time to talk about how quality is defined at your company. Stop the tape now for exercise one. When you return to the videotape, you'll resume lesson one. Now that you've talked about how you define quality in your company, let's resume lesson one. SPC tracks the variability of products or services to help you sort out natural variability from unnatural variability. Based upon samples, SPC gives you a picture of how the operation is doing. A picture is clearer and easier to analyze than a page of numbers. This picture of the process is called a statistical process control chart. Suppose an operator sampled parts throughout the day and plotted the measurements on a chart. 
the plot of individual measurements might look like this. It's nothing more than a bell curve stretched out over time. Now suppose the samples were averaged and the averages were plotted. They too can be compressed into a bell curve. This distribution obviously has fewer beads, one-fifth as many to be exact, because it is the distribution of averages. It's a narrower curve than that of the individuals. Its narrowness is expressed as a smaller standard deviation. Because the distribution of sample averages is so much narrower than the distribution of the individual values, it will be more sensitive to changes in the population. Therefore, we can take advantage of the information supplied by samples to monitor the process variability. We can take samples from the parts being made, make a simple calculation of the averages, and plot each average as a single point on a control chart. These points are then connected with a line. Over the course of time, these single points will show a pattern from which we can determine if we need to make an adjustment in our process. Ideally, all the points should stay within our three sigma limit. When a process begins to drift away from the average of our normal distribution, we know we may need to adjust the process before it produces an unacceptable product. In lesson four, we'll look at some typical ways to interpret control charts. This ends lesson one. In this lesson, you've learned a definition for quality, why the customer is important in defining quality, a definition of statistical process control, how SPC can improve quality, and the relationship between the distributions of individuals and sample averages. Stop the videotape now and perform exercises two and three.